All right, so this is the second greenhouse harvest. As you can see, I got a lot of new varieties in here. Some of the other ones were picked clean pretty much, so I'm going to have to wait till hopefully the end of September before I start seeing flowers again. They're starting to put out flowers, which is good. That means I'm probably going to get an indoor harvest anyway. There's no way the outdoor peppers are going to produce another harvest by the end of the year, especially these, you know, habanero types. They take, literally, they took, these took all summer just to get to this point, and they're, some of them aren't even 100% ripe, so they take an incredibly long time to, to ripen. I'm just not going to make the end of the year with a, a, I might get a third harvest, a greenhouse harvest, with some of the existing peppers I already have. There's a couple peppers that are from up here. I brought these. I took the, the rest of the fatalities off of here. There's a couple green ones on there left, but I took all the rest of these off because they were ready. Uh, these are the reapers that are ready from up here on the deck. This literally took me all day to set this up. Between cutting the peppers, keeping everything separated, bringing them up here, writing all the tags. You know, it was just an all-day deal. Yeah, I just want to show you quickly that... You can see I stripped these down, but they're actually starting to throw out more fruit. You can see the, the three-year bell has got a couple more bell peppers on it coming out. All right. You can see some of the flowers. They're coming up. Three-year bells that are in the greenhouse, I'm just going to let them die for the winter. I'm not bringing them in. I'm going to bring just what I have on the deck in, and that's it. I'm not bringing all those other ones up. I'm done with them. Uh, yeah, you can see there's flowers coming out on the uh, some of these peppers that are up here on the deck and they're not going to make peppers and be ready for peppers by the end of fall or whenever it's the first frost comes that plant will die that's why I have to bring them in and that thing will continuously produce fruit throughout the winter I'll do a final assessment on you know what I what peppers I think were the best growing peppers which ones I really didn't think were, were good and I'll do like a quick slideshow I'll make some recommendations of what I think you should grow in a hot sweet semi-hot type thing so I'll, I'll have my picks at the end of the year for you guys to uh, just get an idea maybe you might want to try growing some of these yourself uh, yeah this is new that's the uh, ahi habanero we got the uh, Malaysian Gornog we got this one Trinidad perfume what else we got here the scotch bonnet we got I call it Frafarillo it's easy for me to say and remember I just say it that way probably wrong people freak and we got the brown bootlas. We got brown bootlas, guys. I am scared to eat those things. I'm probably not even going to eat them. Uh, we got peach habaneros. These are the peach habaneros. Okay. Now, this is the one that I was telling you about. This is the habanero that I got from Walmart. And I grew it out, and this is what it came out. It came out exactly the way I got them from Walmart. I can't really show you how too closely. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can kind of see it's kind of translucent. You can see like the veining in it. Uh, let me see if there's a better one. I mean, look at the bottom of this thing. That is a completely bizarre looking pepper. This was the pepper that I got from Walmart. I, I didn't get seeds from Walmart. I bought the peppers, and I was using the peppers, and the taste just blew me away. I was like, whoa. You know, because I'm used to eating, like, these kind of habaneros, you know. You get bored of those things, guys. They really get, they get to you after a while. It's just, I, I don't even want to eat them anymore. I've eaten so many of those things, I'm just, like, I'm kind of hoping the plants die so I don't have to eat them anymore. I mean, that sounds mean, but I'm just sick of them. But when you eat one of these, now, if I remember, uh, these weren't incredibly hot. They had heat on them. They had heat, but it had a beautiful flavor that just stayed with you. We were a little bit fruity, but it, it tasted like a peach. It literally tasted like a peach. That's what I remember uh, in my head, like a peach or some kind of tropical fruit or something. But it wasn't like that hop, habanero, this kind of fruity flavor, which is all right. But this one really was nice. I really liked it. So uh, you could see the difference in this habanero and, say, that habanero. I mean, they're completely different habaneros. This one actually has a fuzzy stem on the plant and everything. So I was just intrigued by it, so I grew it out. 
I figured I'd show you guys, and I got seeds for it, so maybe I'll offer seeds uh, on the next giveaway, next time I do a giveaway, I'll offer everybody some seeds, and uh, if you're interested in these, um, they're a great pepper. If you're kind of experimenting with the heat on, uh, you know, you're moving up in heat, and you're kind of going into habaneros, this is definitely one to give a try. Very pleasant. It, it didn't have, like, habaneros are kind of funny. You have either people who like habaneros or people who just simply don't like habaneros. And I kind of respect and understand that because it, it does have its unique taste and flavor. If you're kind of eating them in a salad or by themselves, if you're putting it in salsa, you don't really notice it. But when you're kind of just eating them, you, you, you I don't know, they, they have a taste that may not agree with everybody. Not everybody likes habaneros. I know I didn't care for them when I first started eating them, but I like them now, but I'm sick of them. I'm sick of the ones that I eat, but this was a pleasure. This was an absolute pleasure to eat, so I really wanted to point that out to you. Let me see. Here's another one. You can see these things are gigantic. I mean, this thing's, I mean, look at the size of these things. <laughs> They're absolutely huge. So maybe I'll offer seeds to that habanero to some people. I really don't know what the name of it is. It just said Pimenets Habanero, I believe. So maybe I'll offer seeds to that if people are interested. And, um, you know, I'll get them out to you uh, on the next giveaway. I got a ton of Bucciolokias. A ton of them. Guys, these things are like... They're, they're orange for some reason, or not like red, red, I guess. I don't know. If anybody's ever grown Bucciolokias, they'll kind of know what I'm talking about. But this thing feels like a little piece of plastic. It doesn't It doesn't even feel real. It's so light, it's ridiculous. There's like no, no weight on this thing. But they're orange. They're not exactly red, you know. I mean, they're orange. So I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I ordered. I paid extra for seeds that were orange bootsalokey is i hope they don't come out exactly the same i hope there's a little something different on them but yeah if you ever grow bootsalokey is they don't even they feel like a piece of wax fruit like an empty piece of plastic like <laughs> just so you know you're not going to get like a big juicy thick walled heavy pepper uh what else we got that might be different there's my reapers look at that bad boy that'll cook you alive this is a very interesting one right here the char the char pita i got that from a seed exchange and um a very fascinating pepper plant and the behavior it grows i'm going to try to do some crossing using the genetics from that pepper now the hot beads i have two sets of hot beads i have these which are very large hot beads they the whole it was only one plant out of about three plants or four plants that came up with these very large type uh, peppers they're not small this is what hot beads should look like okay it's a bird pepper look at the size difference to the two different types of peppers so i am separating the large uh, peppers from the small ones and i am going to try to see if i can grow these out again and get the same large hot bead pepper type and um Again, I'll offer seeds to those in the future. We got some Gorgons ready. A lot of these weren't totally ready. I just wanted to get some off the plant so I can get it in the photo shoot of this one. So I can get the varieties up and on here and get the tags made and the seeds, the plates and the places for for the seeds and everything like that. It's just, I wanted to get them up and started. So there's only a few varieties left that I don't have up here that are been tagged already but look at the mar giant marconis guys look at how gorgeous of a pepper this is i mean seriously guys this is just absolutely gorgeous i mean I, if you've never grown a giant marconi i know it's kind of a generic name or a generic type pepper you can kind of buy the plant from it in big box stores so a lot of people are like that eh, it's nothing special about that it's a gorgeous pepper though it's a great grilling pepper it's a great salad pepper it's sweet beyond belief a very big pleasure uh, to grow those peppers. I highly recommend growing those peppers. And here's another oddball. This is the uh, Paradixum Alaku Sarga Zentis. I, I have no idea if I said that right. If I said it right and you're Spanish, please correct me. Give me the correct pronunciation so I can say that because I have no idea what that means. Or, But anyway, this is a gorgeous pimento type of pumpkin pepper it's just 
I'm, I'm only sad that I only got a couple. There's a few green ones on there now. Uh, I picked this one because this one's literally sat on that vine. That plant has been on there since, like, the last week of July. It's been yellow like this, just sitting there, sitting, sitting, sitting. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they ever ripen. It's still kind of, like, green on the top. I don't have no idea. This thing has literally been there forever. I finally just took it off and figured I'd put it in the photo shoot. It's a fascinating-looking pepper. And, of course, you know, I got the brown bootlers. I got to show off my bootlers, guys. I got to show off the bootlers. There's a little damage on the bottom here. I'm not sure what happened. I think that's heat damage. But the majority of it looks pretty good. Here's a nice one up here. You can see it's, just, it's not totally ripe, but it's just a nice, big, hot, deadly pepper. Got some more noglas that I took off from up here on the deck. These are the serenos. Look at all the serenos I got. And that whole plant, that sereno plant is covered in green ones. I didn't want to take them all off. I figured let them ripen. If you don't take the peppers off, they'll never throw out flowers. So uh, maybe I'll do it in a few more weeks or um, at the end of the month maybe. We'll see if we can get some more plants. I got to do some pruning. I got to get this flowered before the end of this month. And, and that means if I got to take all the green ones and everything off, I got to do it. And prune it too. You know, I got to do the pruning and everything on it. I got this, which is the Joe's Long Cane. This is a magnificent pepper. If you grow it in a, in a really right conditions with really good soil and plenty of water, you're going to get a lot of these come off that plant. That plant will get big. It was just in a little uh, one-quart pot, and it produced quite a bit of peppers for something that was in a one-quart pot. I wasn't interested in production this year. I just wanted to get climatized seeds, and then next year... I will be growing a lot of these peppers on my property that I had prepared the land for that will be growing these peppers in large abundances. So we will be seeing probably 10 or 20 times what you see here next year. But right this year was just getting seed. That is all my concern. I don't even, a lot of peppers kind of went to waste actually too because I can't eat them all. Uh, this is the Corilio de Cocina. This is a fascinating shaped pepper. I just, I seen this online, I said, I gotta get this, this is just something I have to grow, and I, in fact, when I'm done with the video, I might do a review on some of these peppers while they're still good, because I am trying to dry them out, see how they powder, you know, I can give you an idea which ones powder good, which ones don't, I'm definitely not going to powder the Mar Marconi's, but I will try to powder up a lot of these thin-walled uh, peppers here, like here, you can see, this is the, um, it looks like a scotch bonnet. This one came out looking like a scotch bonnet. I'm going to separate the seed from this because this ain't supposed to look like that. But maybe it's supposed to. I don't know. Generally, this is supposed to be the shape of the Trinidad perfume. That's the kind of shape you want to see and look for with that, with the crown, with that bump on the top, a little bit of a point, a high center. Or you want to kind of see it look like this a little bit more like that But this looked almost too much like a scotch bonnet. It was growing next to my scotch bonnets You know what I mean? It, it looks a lot like it so it could have crossed So I'll separate the seeds and then I'll mark them and if they keep coming up in this particular shape and variety of a year Then I will know that they crossed and I'll have to isolate that strain uh, anything else here that I want to show you? Yeah, the peach habanero. That's a peach habanero. Very interesting color. Uh, I like the looks of it. It's nice and waxy. Maybe we'll do a cut and go open on that and do a taste test. As you can see, this is very different from this habanero here. I'll just show you because you might think, oh, they're the same as the peach habaneros. Totally different pepper, guys. Totally different. You see the ridges on this thing on mine? Uh, the Walmart one, and then here's your peach habanero. Kind of looks like a wax fruit. Different in color. The peach is kind of light in color. This is a little bit on the orange side. Fascinating pepper. All right, so I think that's it. These are the uh, Italian pepperoncinis. Uh, they seem to be a little bit different than the regular other pepperoncini that I have. Like, these kind of grew a lot larger and longer and just some small little differences I've noticed in this pepper as opposed to the number one or number two uh, pepperoncini I have. So I will be keeping these seeds separate and growing them out separately and marking them separately so I know if there is any kind of a difference, I want to make sure that I don't cross them over or even grow them next to each other. I want to make sure that this 
uh, variety doesn't cross over and kind of blend. Here's another look at some Fatalis I pulled off of here. Guys, if you like Fatalis, you like Habaneros, these are good. Just keep in mind what I've noticed with eating these Fatalis, and I've been eating a few of them the last couple days. They, for some reason, they come back on you. That you, you just keep like you'll belch and then it'll be like you kind of taste that taste and that whole taste fills your sinuses the aroma of it kind of just stays in there after a while it just you don't want to taste it no more if you know what i'm saying uh, it just keeps coming back that's what i've noticed with these fatali so i'm not i don't know if it's that particular fatali i'll try a couple of different varieties of fatali oh well i guess <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to keep reshooting this video. This took me a long time to do this. I'm going to separate these. I f just found the bag. It's um, I'm, Guys, I'm burnt out. I've just been incredibly busy here. Um, I'm just, there's all these peppers in here. Oh, man. I can't believe I did this. <laughs> I got to do all of these peppers. I thought I was done. It's already getting to the evening already. Oh, these are good. I'm gonna. I got to do a taste test on these for you, and op do open it up and show you what the inside of that looks like. It's an interesting pepper. It has some interesting attributes. I don't know. All right. I'll guess. Um, I'll just include this towards the end of the video. I'll try to edit some out so it's not forever long. But I'll have to add these in. All right. So just hang in there. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm shooting this video for the second time because I forgot a bag that had about 15 or so varieties in there that I needed to include, and that took about another two hours to tag and separate them. So I'm shooting this for the second time. You can see the, how beautiful those are. They're just gorgeous looking. All right. Those, these are those bland peppers. We will try to grow those next year. I changed my mind. Instead of not growing them, I will grow them again. And we'll see if we can get the flavor from them. Here's something I want to point out. Now, this is a Pennock. The Pennock pepper. This is a, where is it? Where is the Pennock? This is the normal version of Pennock. I believe that's Pennock, isn't it? Uh, I didn't write it down, did I? See how easy it is to make a mistake? Well, I know it's a panic because I know about the shape. And you can see on here. Alright, that's what a panic looks like. And oh, I just squished a tomato with my feet, guys. And then there's this thing, which I really have no idea what this thing is. I'm assuming it's a panic, but it's a yellow variety of pepper, and I'm really not too sure. I think it's a panic. Here's another one that has that triangular pendant type shape to it, so I'm assuming it's some kind of yellow version of panic. Don't know. This came out of a pack of seeds where a bishop's crown came out of it, the panic came out of it, which is what it was all supposed to be. And now this yellow version of a panic. And now I have another version of a panic that's in there that I didn't harvest yet because they're not totally ready yet. But it's a ball shaped type panic. Like this is a more of a pendulum shape. The other one's more of like a round ball with that point on the bottom. They're all different. Every, everything coming out of that pot is there are seeds that were all different. It was like a grab bag of seeds. So I need to separate a lot of these strains that are coming out of there. Uh, this is this, These are ready. This is the Star of Turkey. It's a very interesting pepper. This is supposedly really hot. This is the Ahi Peanut, I think they call it. It's a peanut pepper. 
and it's getting dark so I'm just kind of running through this to show you a couple things um, I need to do a review on this and I, I need to show you that pepper it's a very interesting characteristic of that pepper which I'm not going to talk about yet until we get to it here's the Ethiopian brown look at that tell me that's not absolutely incredible looking I, I can't wait to try these I, I just I, there's not enough time in the day for me to do any anything and get anything done to be honest with you but nevertheless I'll do what I can I'll try to get all these images out to you guys and I got a lot of work getting this out of here now so I'll just give you a quick scan And I'll see you on the next one.